What's up guys, it's Boondocks, and while it's been a while since I've last uploaded, I haven't really been slacking in regards to the planes. Well, maybe a little bit. But today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 favorite frames to bring with me whenever I'm going out on the planes of Edelon. Now, take note that these are my personal favorite fives, and they're just the ones that I gravitate towards more than other people, and they're not necessarily going to reflect what the community at large recommends as being the most powerful or the most meta when going out there. So I am going to be missing some of the more common frames such as Frost or some of the more large powerhouses like Haro. And that's mostly because they've slipped through the cracks whenever I've chosen the frames that I want to play because again I do gravitate towards some more than others. And oddly enough this list of mine, the top five, is actually made up of pretty much all female frames. In all honesty, my honorable mention, which I'm going to put up here in a second, could have easily swapped places with number five, and the only reason I didn't do it was because I wanted my top five to be all female frames. So, with that being said, let's talk about the honorable mention real quick. He comes in the form of Rhino. Now, a lot of players out there probably do know Rhino as being just generally considered a beginner frame, and... That beginner status, the reason why it's so good, still transitions well to the Plains of Edelon, which is actually considered a beginner area. Now the reason why it is so good is not only can you get him early and build him early, but then without having too many mods or even putting all that much effort into him, he can become extremely powerful. And this is thanks to his three primary abilities. One, Iron Skin, two, Roar, and three, Stomp. So, as far as Stomp's concerned, it actually is not as effective out on the plains as it is in other areas. And that generally comes from the fact that the reason why Rhino Stomp was so good previously was the close quarters fighting that you typically see in Warframe kind of gets lost while out on the plains. Additionally, though, the Iron Skin is honestly even more impactful once you start going into the higher levels out in the Edelon because... Getting hit by a single bombing run when you're not on a very good defensive frame can pretty much wind up with you dead. Iron Skin, however, can protect you from this 100%. So a bomber comes in, you survive the blast, pop off a roar, boost your damage, gun that bitch down. So because of that, you can actually build him any way that you want to be beneficial out on the plains. I would recommend focusing less on the more CC heavy, aka range duration build, and instead focusing on more power strength, as well as some duration going along with it. The only reason you actually want range is to buff your teammates with your roar. So if that's not a concern of yours, feel free to skip it. However, don't be that guy. Try to give your teammates some roar too. Anyways, let's move on to the actual list, starting with number 5. Number 5, Ivara. Ivara has always been a very interesting frame, and people typically really like to play her, yet don't. So here's the reason why. Typically she's very good for stealth missions and solo play. Like, whenever you want to actually live, like, your own little fantasy of being this stealth sniper, Ivara is who you go for. She's the best at it. But as soon as you try to get away from that, well, yeah, it doesn't kind of help. And the fact that up until the Plains of Edelon came out, everything was so enclosed and tight in most areas of the game, Ivara never really could shine. Now, however, she's extremely fun to play. Not only can you prowl and sneak around the outside of a fighting area while the rest of your team's in the middle holding off enemies, sniping off prime targets with, well, either a sniper rifle a bow, or even more importantly, your Artemis bow. And then moving in from area to area just to destroy them. While some of her utilities lost in the form of her zipline arrows being relatively worthless, the fact that she can still set them up to move around while prowling, to get around a little bit quicker, and then just destroy enemies, makes her so fun to play. Beyond that, even though she doesn't have the actual tankiness of say the rhino or some of the other frames on my list coming up the fact that her stealth makes her avoid most damage and then the fact that she can take out bombers 
before they can take her out, thanks to her, the power of her Artemis bow, make her extremely good here. Not to mention using her second ability and actually being able to guide your arrows and your shots. While typically you don't actually use that in most gameplay scenarios, out on the planes, it's a lot of fun to actually chase down flying aircrafts and snipe far off enemies while you're sitting up on top of a hill. Is she the most powerful here? No. Is she extremely fun and fulfilling when it comes to like your own little fantasy? Absolutely. I definitely recommend building her with power strength and efficiency. The reason you want efficiency is because you're going to be having two pretty much channeled abilities on, so you're not going to gain the benefit of a lot of uh, your energy restoring abilities. So because of that, you definitely want the efficiency. But with enough, you can essentially never run out of energy, even while having Prowl on and using your Artemis bow. Additionally, since you are going to be boosting your power strength to increase the damage of your Artemis bow, definitely toss on an Infiltrate. This will increase your speed while prowling around, and it will feel immensely beneficial. That being said, as far as range is concerned, it's only beneficial for like her stealth arrows. So unless you're there to be like a team player, I move away from that. So don't forget to mod your primary because all those mods get benefited onto your Artemis bow. Anyways, on to the next one. Number four, Nova. So Nova is my fourth choice and kind of like Ivara, it's because of this fantasy fulfillment and her even more so for a role-playing idea. Now, hands down, the best way of getting around out on the Plains of Edelon is using your Arc Wing. With that being said, there's something about teleporting from area to area using the wormhole that makes Nova just feel so good. Not to mention, like I was mentioning before, where you can use her to sort of fulfill this role play. So to me, jumping into the middle of an enemy camp, destroying everything, especially in like the defense mission types where the enemies will keep spawning, keep spawning, and then after X amount of time you have to escape because they start overwhelming you. Well, tossing down a wormhole and then watching you and your entire team just pile through it and like teleport, you know, 200 meters away before it dumps you out way up in the air and then you fall down to earth or cast another wormhole and jump even further, it just feels so good. And once you learn how to use the wormholes to pretty much fly from area to area around the map, it is amazing, and I absolutely love her. It makes you feel like an elite tactical strike team, and it works even better if you're like on comms with your teammates, so that way you can coordinate between each other, say, hey, I'm putting down a wormhole, and then everyone piles through it, and you get the fuck out whenever the mission's over. It feels amazing. So because of that, I typically like to focus a little bit more on range with her, not forgetting duration and power strength. The reason being, duration and power strength will both contribute to your molecular prime. This is essential because Plains of Edelon is so large, your molecular prime needs duration in order to even like hit enemies at all. And that's like your only defensive ability on her, other than just constantly moving around. Personally, I use Xenerix, so that way I could teleport in between, and then you pop out, use a Molecular Prime, jump back into Xenerix, and jump around again, thereby avoiding most damage. So you do want some power strength in order to increase the slow on the enemies. You're going to want some duration to make sure it spreads to them, and range to make sure your wormholes are as far as possible, because that's where you're going to have the most fun possible. Then, obviously, efficiency. So what I'm talking about is almost impossible, maxing out everything. Yeah, Jack of All Trades builds, Master of None, that's kind of what you got to do out in the Plains of Adelon with Nova, but trust me, if you do it, you will have some of the best time ever. So, on to number three. Number three, Titania. So, Titania is a very, very unique frame, and I definitely love where DE was coming at when they designed her. Now, Arcwing kind of sucks in my opinion. However, Titania the controls for Arcwing a little bit more streamlined as far as like the up, down, just general movement. There's none of that crazy like world turning bullshit. And it's extremely powerful and very unique. The issue was typically in Warframe, due to all the corridors that you're going down, you couldn't 
effectively get into your tiny arc wing mode and then move from area to area. You'd constantly be running into doors, hitting walls, taking damage, and it just didn't feel all that good. Yeah, sure, sometimes you would find a more open environment, like on some of the outdoor corpus areas or some of the defense missions, uh, intercept where you can fly around and that type of thing, but they're few and far between, and because of that, Titania kind of got moved to the you know backside. However, now, using your Razor Wing while out in the plains makes you feel amazing. You get that benefit of Arc Wing, except all the time, with one button press, and you don't have to worry about summoning it and then losing it. You can... Yeah, a lot of fun. And not only does your primary get buffed ridiculously while in Razor Wing, but your defense as well. While in Razor Wing, Titania actually can evade 50% of the damage coming in at her, and then the Razor Wing isn't named from that mode, actually. It's actually named after the little butterflies that you summon. Those butterflies, the Razor Wing butterflies, will go and attack enemies, doing a little bit of damage, but the main thing is they, they get distracted. While they're distracted, they no longer attack your teammates or you. Finally, because you are out on the plains, there's wildlife out there. You can actually get every single buff, wildlife, ranged, melee, everything. You can get every buff on Titania. So if for some reason you did want to build duration, I don't recommend it. You could technically have every buff while flying around in Razor Wing. Personally, I focus purely on Razor Wing Fuck all of our other abilities, and for that, you need to focus on power efficiency, since Razor Wing is a relatively high drain. Titania can kind of make up with this for having a high energy pool, but you'll burn through it pretty quick. Finally, power strength, because you'll get a higher multiplier for your primaries. You don't necessarily need the power strength, however, and you could put that into other areas, such as your duration, if you wanted those buffs. Don't forget that just like Ivara, Titania gains all the benefits from your primary mods onto her primary while in Razor Wing. Kind of ignore melee though because <laughs> it sucks. It, it really sucks. Especially when you compare the scaling. One thing though, try shooting one of those uh, bombers while in Razor Wing mode. So fun to watch it die. I love personally using corrosive on it and just shredding its armor straight off and then popping it out of the air. Anyways, guys, that's the end of my first part of my part five. My top two, you might be able to guess one, but the other one might be slightly of a sneaky surprise because personally, I don't see all that many people out there playing it, but that's just me. I'm not sure about you, but come back next time and check it out. And until then, good luck, have fun, peace. By the way, if you guys wouldn't mind letting me know about my opening video, whether it's too long, too loud, what's up, I can always cut it down a little bit. I just really like it, so let me know. See you.